Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I'm interrupting your free speech TV because MCAT isn't just only free speech TV. Let's kick things off with some news that are happening in and around the world and some local news here as well in Missoula. We're kicking things off with the protests that are happening in Cuba as Cuba is going through a protest period, which during the Castro's have been virtually no non-existent. Uh, stability was challenged when Fidel Castro retired after nearly 50 years in charge of the isolated island country. Raul, his brother, took over in 2011 and continues to today. So far, COVID-19 has been a boiling po pot for many people and with restrictions and lack of access to vaccines have boiled over along with food shortages and uh, all sorts of basic amenities. And so far, Cuba, Cuba has seen little freedoms with uh, Raul opening some uh, lines of internet and ac accessibility for uh, people as well with low level uh, internet to cap uh, capitalistic freedoms to trade with other countries, but tariffs have made it too expensive for Cubans. A lot of this uh, was contributed to the Cuban hip hop song, Patria de Vida, which translates to homeland and life. It is a great video. I suggest you guys check that out, but respectfully, uh, that sparked political protest and went over uh, the long history of the government letting their country slowly decay. Sad news across the Gulf as Surfside Collapse has said that they would change course from a rescue to recovery and the death toll keeps rising. Thursday saw a number reach 97 people and so far 90 are identified. 14 people have not been accounted for and building experts believe that the circumstances of the collapse fe uh, fell like a pancake flat. Crews were hopeful for the possibility that there would be a wedge, uh, some kind of triangular shape where buildings would do that. But uh, as time went on, the sober reality set in. Right now, the mayor, Charlie uh, Burkett, says crews are working on removing 18 million pounds of rubble and the site is a holy site and should be respected as crews finish. Uh, Cora Newman is all in, in, in state news. Uh, looks like Cora Newman is one of the many candidates uh, putting their hat into the ring for the uh, U for the U.S. Uh, congressional seat that just got added to the state of Montana. And this is just kind of early phases because the election won't be until 2022, which uh, I don't want to talk too much about elections, but this is just something that's kind of being brought up because both sides are starting to see a lot of people jumping in, being a part of the primary. It is a very very big deal because Montana has not had uh, two congressional seats in the state of Montana for three decades. Um, this was on my radio, but I wanted to avoid too many details as you can find out more at MissoulaCurrent.com. And uh, yeah, I also wanted to show you guys the uh, new logo for the Olympics that are coming out on the 23rd of July. And uh, yeah, so um, one of the things that uh, Japan had to deal with was the COVID pandemic and a lot of cities that, and you know, most of this is at this point is common knowledge because it seems to be a word of trivia is where uh, most cities have a tendency to go bankrupt because of all the money that they invest in these training centers and uh, com competition areas for the Olympics. So uh, this is uh, basically what it looked like. So you see the 2020 and then they just added an NE. Yeah, pretty clever cover-up uh, for NBC, but a lot of the uh, logos and uh, plushies that the Japanese uh, Tokyo Olympics will be held uh, will most likely probably have a line drawn between the, the uh, on the zero for <laughs> selling some of their stuff, which is unfortunate. Uh, I don't know why I'm laughing, that's mean. But uh, last Thursday, the city uh, and county had a joint meeting and they spoke about the homeless issue and they were talking about investing in uh, the homeless populations here in Missoula and to avoid uh, that uh, Broadway Island incident that happened uh, about a little over a month ago, for which forcefully removed encampments by uh, the bank uh, per health department's request. And so far, they're looking to invest in millions of dollars to help people get a uh, stepping point towards housing. And part of the success of this uh, is brought to you from the fact that uh, the city of Missoula also had uh, United Way of Missoula, a couple of the churches, I don't know them off the top of my head, but it was part of the TSOS sites, which is called the Temporary Safe Outdoor Space, which happened off of um, Highway 93, just a little bit past the old Walmart. Um, so they're talking about this, uh, it's moving forward, and they believe that if they do not uh, invest in this, we're going to have tent cities much like Seattle and Portland. Uh, and that's what was said by them. Um, let's see, up next we have some foreign art video for you guys. This is from our Dude I Just Drew episode from a couple Saturdays ago, and it was with uh, Dylan Albans, uh, who is the guest. So without further ado, here's Rowan Lemus. Welcome back to another episode of Dude I Just Drew Season 2. <laughs> uh, I'm Rowan, and this is... I am Dylan. Uh, 
handpicked from the audience. Yes. Yeah. From our great big audience back there. Yeah. I think it's 20 rows. Right? Yeah, 20 rows. That 20 is impressive. Huge studio. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Can't believe I got no. to be the lucky one. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> exciting. <laughs> Now, now, Dylan, I'll explain the rules, of course, for everybody. The rules are, is that uh, you flip a coin, Okay. see who goes first. Uh, we got five suggestions, we go five rounds, we... Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes, five rounds, we switch off every round, and uh, we judge all of them at the, by, at the end. All right. And that's what, that's what happens. Cool. That's what we well, do here. Well, uh, yeah, let's hope I, uh, I can... Okay. I put my mind to paper. Skate and Grant? Skate and... Like Grant Street? Grant? Skate and Grant. That's not oh, a character. I, I think that's a character. That's not a character or anything, is it? Wait, no, it says Skate and Grant? Wait, is Wait, that... No. What? I didn't write Did that. Did you write that? <laughs> Who wrote that? Skate, Ant, and Rant? What, okay. <laughs> what, what is it? It just says Skate, Ant, Rant. Okay, so it's a character. Oh, no, okay, wait, I got it. I, I know what I could draw now. Rant? Okay, I got it. Well, well, that's that's. What do you know about ants? Um, that's a good question. What what? Oh, I know that th there's like a Facebook group of like a couple million ants. Of a couple million. That, yeah. That sounds pretty mean, actually. Yeah. I don't I, I don't use Facebook too much, but um. This guy. Maybe maybe cool. I would consider giving them. Those are a supposed follow. to be sunglasses, but we don't need to add um, those yet. Those now look now he looks nerdy. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go with. Oh man. Here we go. That looks like a. Looks kind of like a skateboard, that's I guess. About, that's about skateboarding, right? Yeah, you know, it's usually the size of your body. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but maybe, maybe it's only a skate and Grant. Maybe this is actually a human. <laughs> maybe this is a person. This is this is a pretty good story so far. Yeah. I like um, I like right, Grant skate. Up. All right. Well, that's all I had. There you go. Can you can you see that? <laughs> I like how the money is labeled. Yeah, I tried to do a dollar symbol, money. but I, I have money. money. Uh, that's why I get. I, that's why I'm edited the most. That's why. Zoom ins. That's why I get the most zoom ins. That's why I'm made fun of all the time. It's like right. Got it. I was like, they kind of look like the creatures from Bone. They, they, oh, with the. Oh, that's the second eyes. The reference to Bone. We Damn, done. that's the second. Really? Look at that. Like I said, it's my favorite. <laughs> I said it's it's. I like it. Clock towel. No. <laughs> no. It was it? No. <laughs> Mine's way more simple than that. <laughs> but I said, you what did you mean with time appropriate? Okay, I get that, I get that. You, who said clock towel? <laughs> Gotta go fast. Gotta go. Okay. I finally found it. Oh, yeah. Less time on the time towel compared to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to knock off points for that. Might one. have to oh. knock off points. Oh. oh. Wait, why are they making fun of why are they making fun of him in the shower? The the, the young clocks <laughs> the, the the young clock stole the towel from the grandfather clock while he was showering. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Dead City. That's a good oh, song that's by uh Young Blood <laughs> Young Blood Black Brass Band. Young, 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 young Blood, Blood Brass Band. Young Blood They have a song called Brass 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 City. Blood? Young Brass Blood Young Brass Blood. That mouse? That uh, <laughs> that one's supposed to be a a bread man. <laughs> this is awesome. This is quality content that YouTube wants. <laughs> Work with this algorithm, please, please. <laughs> I wasn't copying you. I was listening. There's a there's a an upside down. There's a couple castles. Oh, oh look, it's an IKEA. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's a giant crescent city, and the guy who lives in uh, the castle. Oh my god, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like the day before Independence Day, I figured, uh, why not? So why not just write Fourth of July? Okay. Or, okay. Fireworks. How that is an intense stare. <laughs> staring into the depths of my soul. I thought his eyebrows, like, touched his ass. <laughs> his eyebrows go through. definitely feels head. like anime. It's an intense moment. I want you. I want you. Specifically. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah, oh man. I had so, to turn around for a second. I see a flashlight. The guy was very upset. <laughs> so he's, he's, pajama Sam has grown up. He's grown up to be an old man who still so thinks, that the, 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 I mean, he's, the monster from his closet has followed him into adulthood. No one believes him. He likes that the dark is after him. Yeah, he and he can't sleep. ever sleep because the darkness will get him. He's got one of those. Dog twister. Dog twister. <laughs> Dog, Dog twister. I can think of a couple different things right off the bat. Yeah, same. Okay. <laughs> I don't draw people, I take pictures of people, okay? <laughs> oh. Whoa! It's not even on the ground. It's it's like I know. It, <laughs> think of it like almost as like a creature wearing a clown disguise, because it's a different art style. Almost. It's wearing the skin of a clown. It's wearing the skin of a clown. Broken. Uh, <laughs> the clown. Hi, there's broken the clown. Broken, broken the clown. Yeah. What a great another episode that we had today. It was great having you on. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was, it was a lot I'm, of fun. I'm, I'm glad to, to help. I, I'm, no, I'm glad you have done it. It was fun. Yeah. What? Well, uh, hey, tell us, tell us the audience who can, again, where, where can they find you? Oh, uh, you, you can find me on Instagram at Villain of the Dead. Uh, it's not drawing, it's photography. And as always, you can find me on my social media, Noah.Arts on Instagram. You can find me on No War with exclamation mark on Twitter. Uh, find Two Legs Drew on Facebook, on YouTube, Spreadshirt. Our is that all of them? Maybe. I check out my comic if you want to at ShrineComics.com. Punch Drunk. Uh, anime comic if you want to. And uh, yeah, another great episode. Glad to have glad to have everybody on. And uh, we'll see you all the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
be specific. Uh, Escape Room Tournament of Champions. Yes, this is a sequel, and like any other Battle Royale, Royale film or whatever, what basically killed everyone in the first film, you're bringing back the winners from the previous film, and you're basically uh, pitting them against other winners from other films that don't exist. From the creators of the first movie that has a deadly spin on escape rooms and other dumb games like what if we have tic-tac-toe but with deadly consequences well this one's called escape room tournament of champions because nobody has escape room two on their bingo cards welcome back the previous winner who is probably the only one left from the last one fight their way through yet another series of escape rooms i assume they're gonna take liberty from hunger games to Fight corruption from the higher-ups who host these deadly games. All right, so that does it for your pre-critic. Up next, we have uh, dubbing stuff for you guys, and this is a kind of a uh, a love letter to my one and only YouTube fan who likes Tarzan the Fearless maybe a little bit too much. Here's this, and when I come back, we're going to talk about some city. <laughs> Woman, you okay? Let me put you down on soft rock. Mm, no. Mm, Come on, Mom. Five more minutes. You wake up now. Mm, okay. Come on now. Oh. <gasps> this place is much nicer than my house. And you will live with me and Monkey forever. Uh, oh. Oh, yeah. It's uh, you. Um. <laughs> Who are you again? You. Hand. Oh, yeah. That's my hand. I want to do that Disney thing where we put our hands together. Oh, that's cute, but overplayed. Mm. Oh, I, I don't think it's overplayed. Look, isn't this cool? Oh, yeah. You're giving real B-plot energy <sighs> from this uh, particular oh, part, even and, though you're the star. <laughs> and, and. All right, all right, we're searching. We're searching around this forest, this jungle, this forest. We're looking this for bunk. some things. Yeah, hmm. I don't know the words. What if we can shoot that? It's called a map, sir. Oh, whatever. Look over there. That's where Tarzan is, and over there is where we're supposed to go. Hmm. Hmm. Will you hurry up already? I got places to be and people to kill and plenty of animals to shoot. Oh, uh, well, I guess I can go on ahead to scout the area and I can leave you two alone. Don't be suspicious. Don't be <laughs> Going suspicious. Going on ahead. Hmm. Do you ever just hmm. want to... Stay up all night and look at the stars. Ugh, man. When I was younger, I used to stare at the stars all night long. It was really fun. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, do you, how long do you think we're going to find our... Uh, like, ah! <laughs> There's no hope for you here. I need that map. Oh! Hey, 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 guys, there's a bunch of animals to shoot. I'll take the first shot. Bam! Looting, looting, I'm looting this guy for stuff. I'm gonna steal this map and things. I'm gonna hunt some stuff. Uh, I ran stuff with stuff. Don't, don't judge me. All right, then. <laughs> the lone wolf continues his solo journey. Oh, I heard something. I heard something. Uh, are, are you oh, okay, man, sir? I don't know what happened. Uh, I think that guy that we trusted. No, not, not Ted. in the head. Oh, I know where this is going. You know what we should do? <laughs> Gonna catch my breath. <laughs> Let's get him. No Let's get him. on my head and gets away with me. Huh? My short-term memory is flaring up again. Mm, darn it! What did I do? Who know hunting the greatest prey of all, man? Yes. Would be so hard. Oh look, it's my wallet. What does the wallet say, sir? Um, it's my wallet. It just has my ID and stuff. Surely good. <sighs> oh man, I hate eavesdropping. Maybe I should just kill him too. Avoid the embarrassment. Do you hear that, sir? My accent's back. <laughs> Jolly good, sir. I am the cat, the form of karma. Huh? Meow. Oh, no. I'm gonna get you. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. I'm chasing you. Oh, come mm, on, yum, 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 yum. Delicious. Oh, oh, my you chips. You, oh, oh man, most humans taste oh, like oh, chips. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Ah, yum, 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 yum. Hey, I say, get away from me. Oh, him. no, here bang, comes bang. the bullets. Whoa, Whoa. I'm out of here. Hmm. Well, that was a close one. I agree. We better keep a sharp eye on this. Hmm. This poor fool. Cause of death? 
instant karma. Hey guys, welcome back. We're talking about some city council stuff kicking off. Uh, just kind of an overview. Uh, one of the things that the city and county are working on besides uh, the homeless issue and uh, funding towards that is they're looking to uh, increase the tax or the tax uh, for uh, marijuana recreational sales starting in uh, January of next year. And so part of this is they're going to put a 3% on top of the 20% on the state tax, which in conjunction will be 23% total. Uh, the county will get 50% of the funds uh, generated from this revenue. Missoula will get 45%, the city I mean, and uh, the Montana Department of Revenue will get 5% as a result. Sandra Vasica speaks against this tax and this is what she had to say about it. I do not agree with uh, the local options marijuana tax. Um, I like all the um, excise and taxes, like the alcohol tax, tobacco tax, marijuana tax, even though I don't partake in, partake in most of those items. I just believe that it's um, passing every an additional cost onto our consumers. It um, impacts a lot of our um, low income um, folks, even more than um, what our property taxes are already at. And uh, I just think it's another opportunity to um, to tax our constituents. It's just another any opportunity that the city sees to tax our constituents, they'll jump right at, and I disagree with that. So I will be not supporting that tonight. Okay, so Sandra Vasica um, did not uh, agree with it, and so also, but unless, uh, unlike the gas tax, who, who really don't need marijuana to drive to the market, gas tax itself is bogus, in my opinion, just so you guys know. But getting back on track, Washington State has a 37% tax on recreational marijuana, and Montana currently sits at 20% with the option to have a tax in communities that are going to be in charge of handing out uh, licensing for the recreational marijuana. Jesse Ramos also uh, disagrees with this tax, and this is what he had to say. I'm going to be speaking against it because I don't think it's right. As Ms. Vasika said, a lot of folks that are using these, um, they, they might have an addiction to it, they might have a dependence on it, they might use it just because their life is, is so crummy at the moment, and I don't think that we should be uh, financially punishing them for that decision either. Um, and I know that I disagree with a lot of my fellow conservatives on this issue, but I think that this is just another area where the government sees dollar signs where they shouldn't. They should see governance. They should see freedom. They should see liberty. If somebody chooses to do this, I don't think they should have to have to pay a fee to the mob. All right. So that's what uh, Jesse Ramos had to say about it. Um, in response, uh, Gwen uh, Jones believes that this is a good plan to help Missoula as a whole and say uh, in how much money we will invest in. So this is what she had to say. Uh, it's all a choice whether people want to buy it or not. And frankly, it's a luxury. And if they want to do it, I'm totally fine with having a very small tax on there. Uh, and this is approved and given to us as a tool by our um, legislature. So I don't have a problem with it at all. I think it's a really good uh, choice for council to go forward with this. And I look forward to seeing what the city of Missoula says, because I think they'll think it through and do what they want to do on it. So I'm very much in support of it. All right, and all citizens of Missoula County and city will get a choice on whether or not they want to opt in to have this additional 3% tax, which will generate revenue of about uh, less than a million dollars. I believe it was like $748,000 annually, but you just never know. Those are projected values. You never know until it happens. And Missoula being the way it is, I'm pretty sure they'll double those numbers just with a 3% tax. Part of the consent agenda <laughs> reflects the accounts and the business as usual stuff in the city and in the case that the city bring bringing up a resolution to support trans youth in our community starting with the dismissal of the Montana law that passed the HB 112 which effectively banned trans youth from pr participating in gender-based sports no one in the city had anything further to say on this but they approved the adoption of standing firm in supporting local area trans youth moving on uh, committee meetings the bu budget committee of the whole met and this is an important meeting because these are going through the processes of determining what the fiscal year 2022 two budgets going to be all about and on the on the uh, on the block this time is the Missoula Fire Department is looking to expand services for the mobile crisis unit, something that has been a fairly private pr uh, pilot program that has expanded even more for demand and services and their crisis units that would ask for $525,000 to keep up with the demand and serve folks in our community seven days a week for 10 hours a day. Um, Missoula Fire Department thinks they need to expand even more so, and this is what they had to say. 
feel that that program is going to have to expand. We've had requests from uh, city council members, county commissioners, and almost every agency that we've worked with, they want that unit in service more than the 10 hours. They want it from eight in the morning till midnight at a minimum um, because they have those, those calls come in that they need that resource and it's just not available at this time. Um, so I will be working on a basically an expanded program to present to you guys of what that may look like and a cost associated with that. And, and bearing in mind as we look at expanding that program, that's not something that can just happen overnight. We've, you know, we've struggled through this pilot program and so that if you guys were to, to double that budget and give that to me today, it would still take um, time to get people hired and recruited and trained and staff and equipment and office needs and all the things that would come along with building that program. And part of their support for the Missoula Fire Department uh, moving forward is they uh, highly trained um, um, training that's required to even be a Missoula firefighter and also EMT. There's a lot of, it, it's very interesting if you actually look it up, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to become a firefighter compared to being a cop. Um, so the city moved to approve this part of the budget for the fire department along with other costs associated with the continued efforts of the Missoula Fire Department. The city funded the pilot program and through the budget committee can finally add it to their annual budget funds through grants and other means. The budget committee is really boring, just so you guys know, but so far this was about the fire department and all their operations. If you're interested, you can learn more by going on to uh, the budget committee of the whole, which will be going into full swing uh, leading up until the August approval of the 2022 fiscal year budget so keep your eye on that if you're really interested in monies that the city is doing so let's talk about the affordable housing residents resi resident oversight committee so part of this was mostly uh, city officials trying to help guide this committee and trying to get this thing really going and off the ground and so far before they can actually allocate any funding they have to have a solid policy in which to implement money uh, things uh, sorry so so far the first month was a uh, meet and greet kind of meeting, but this one had bylaws in place for approval, which they also choose uh, the chair and vice chair for the committee. So what you should know about these committees is that they're temporary by nature and a trust, the trust that the uh, affordable housing trust in this case for housing goes on beyond the committee and the money is solely put into this pot for affordable housing. So regardless of what the committee does or exists or no longer exists, a trust continues past uh, an organization. Most of the funds allocated from the city of Missoula are geared towards affordable housing and keeping folks in homes. They have a list of priorities and two items are on the top of their list. Um, oh wait, wait, hold on. Keeping folks in home uh, and allocated the city geared towards affordable housing and keeping folks in home. Those are the two main points that they wanted to keep uh, harping on. Uh, Mayor John Ang gives advice on how funds can go towards affordable housing via this committee. And this is what uh, Mayor John Ang had to say about this. Is a findings of fact, um, and 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 that's sort of a, a method of not only uh, not only um, restating those those values, but also uh, also describing why why an individual project, in the case of an affordable housing project, why it why it's in alignment with those values. And I think um, if if we do that in each in each case as we give allocations, that um, that I think that 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 provides. Uh, not only that record, but um, is, uh, is sort of a perpetual reminder of um, why we're in the business and, and why the money is going where it's going. Um, so that's, an, that's another way to, to sort of ensure that, um, ensure that those values are top of mind as we go about our business. All right, so that was uh, John Engen talking a little bit more about that. Up next, we have more of a pie chart. So far, the meeting went to detail how they would run in the program and funding mechanism for approval. Emily uh, harris Shearer talks about the draft policy and how funding will be done. And this is what she had to say. We're kicking off your review, which is so exciting. Um, I've been working on these policies since January, so it really feels like a long time coming for me. Um, I'm really excited and I'm so appreciative of your time and your review. Um, so thank you. So, um, as I outlined in your first six month timeline in June, um, the policies are an important step to beginning the implementation of the trust funds work. You know, we can't start grant making or loaning until we have policies in place. Um, and it answers a lot of the questions that the community has around how the trust fund will be administered. Um, and they're really important. 
Um, but I want to emphasize that I'm not here to rush your process. Um, and I um, really value your perspective and I want to honor the work that you need to take and the time that you want to take on this process. All right, so that was uh, Emily talking a little bit more about that. Um, Let's see, they spent most of the time having folks in with organizational skills draft and present to the board like Emily. Uh, Will Seaborn, uh, Seaborn, one of the uh, members of the committee, talks about some of the issues with serving folks who have limited income and making sure that services not, would not restrict them or bind them from a higher wage just because they, do, they don't reach the right amount of low mark to be able to be certified to have these uh, funds put in place. So that's one of the big concerns that he had and this is what he had to say and low-income housing tax credits to fund the same development that's getting uh, housing trust fund, I'm going to have to do 60%. I think what's interesting, though, is I, because there's the match requirement then, is like ultimately then you're going to probably be a more competitive applicant when you can get that match from other resources. And then because of that, like de facto, you're going to end up having to lower your income limits anyway. Um, so I think that's just like an interesting take is um, – even if we set the income limits higher, it's not so much that we couldn't fund those. It's that if they're going to use other funding, it may end up being a wash because they're going to have to do the more restrictive limits of whatever agency is funding them to. Okay, so that was Will talking a little bit about, uh, talking more about that. That was my last clip. Another question, just in general, are the other debts being paid as well? You might be a doctor, but you could also have $400,000 in debt as a result. Think about the other costs to live uh, separate from costs of living. So far, uh, they want to be able to uh, have goals in place where they can uh, be additional funds added that focus on the 20% I stated earlier for grant slash federal funding, but of all, they wanted to make sure that they would keep up with raising costs and demand for housing to reflect that. And so far, they're able to figure out uh, how they're going to serve Missoula's affordable housing and have a the backing of the city of Missoula and other avenues for grants opportunities. For me, more meetings and more, you guys can plug on to uh, ci.missoula.mt.us. You go to your government meetings, you click, on, uh, you go under city council, and there's right there on the very top is agenda webcast minutes you click on that and it shows you either a calendar or a list so I did calendar mode and if you have a list mode it kind of shows you the play by pay play on this but I almost prefer the uh, calendar mode because a lot of times it talks about meetings that are happening in the future but then they have past meetings in this long list right here so if you're interested in a specific day, uh, just so you guys know, all the Wednesday meetings are the meetings in which they talk more detail about plans. And then on Mondays is where they usually have those meetings where they do for final approval, public hearings, and more if you want something to say. Uh, honestly, the committee meetings are a good way to get more in depth with the brass tacks of the city operations. So that is about there. Uh, that's about that. And I wanted to show another video for you guys. And this is an art video. And this is a provided uh, some a video that I've been working on. I did a video called uh, Embodied Engagement, a Mizzou Art Museum original series that they've been doing from the Mizzou Art Museum during the pandemic and also partly during this post-middle pandemic ground that we are living in right now. But without further ado, here is a showcase that is being currently uh, offered that you guys can go into the Mizzou Art Museum for free. But here is a nice taste of some of the art pieces that are going on there currently.
All right, so those are some of your uh, things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Let's talk about some events which helps uh, kick things off. If you're interested in learning more, uh, the Missoula Public Library hosts a story time every Friday morning and many other branches of the library in the Missoula County uh, around 1030. This is for kids age three and older and their caregivers. And part of this is joined for fun stories and fun level of two programming room in the new library. Story time will be recorded and posted online later date on uh, library's official website and YouTube channel. The theme for this week's story is uh, they're going camping and starts at 10.30 a.m. this morning. And if you miss it, there's always one every week. Uh, Rattlesnake Weekly Walks, Pine View Park is the meeting place and you go around every Friday and just go for a walk. And it's uh, hosted by uh, Rattlesnake Mutual Aid, hosts a weekly neighborhood walk. Rain or shine, please wear a mask for the safety of others in attendance. Meet in Pine View Park under the park shelter near playground and tennis courts. Hands-on Science, Engineering, Spectrum Discovery in their new location here at the Public Library. It's just all happening here. Uh, join Spectrum for a guided science activities and discovery bench from 2 to 6 Tuesday through Saturday this week is Engineering. No reg registration reg registration required. So anyways, <laughs> up next we also have the Frog Prince. Uh, so a bunch of MCT shows are happening. This is their uh, Missoula Children's Theater component of their shows. And they're doing the Frog Prince at a 4 p.m. show and a 6 p.m. show. So do not park in their park parking lot. Deep in the royal swamp, a lonely frog retrieves a golden ball from Princess Prim in exchange for friendship and comfort. The spoiled princess doesn't want to live up there in her part of a bargain and puts her royal knights on alert. And so the trouble begins. Luckily, Frog gets some good advice from Ollie, the wise aspen tree, the well-read alligator, and the kindly swamp things. So there's a lot to this story and there's a wonderful opportunity to join that as well. But there's also a show happening at the Zootown Arts Community Center tonight, but also uh, MCAT will be doing a live stream for the comedy show on Saturday night. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. I'm, not, I'm trying not to go too long, just trying to look at the time. Uh, let's see, TransFuture, uh, Crypto Collider, Rob Travolta. TransFuture is one of Missoula's newest bands. They formed during a now emerge after the pandemic. They use the quarantine months wisely crafting a unique rock and new wave. Crypto Collider, a trio of heavy psych rock warriors who seemingly create their own songs entirely through telepathy. Uh, Saturday, kicking off with your farmer's market and such. If you're interested in doing the farmer's market, they are currently at the Red X's. They are also off of Pine Street uh, next to the Thomas Mar Bar and also right in front of the carousel where they're moving while construction for the Higgins Bridge is taking place. And then orienting at a uh, Lubric Forest. So if you're um, if you're interested in about trees and experimental forest, the sport of navigating through terrain with map and a compass, the uh, experimental forest on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. beginning instruction will be provided as well as necessary equipment. The event is free and charged for first timers and available to returning participants. For more information, go to grizzlyorienteering.org. Family fun time at the Missoula YMCA. They have a bunch of events that go on all week long, but on Saturdays from 11 to 1 p.m. This is a great place for families. Uh, indoor all-weather play place for families, children, and their families will enjoy bounce houses, tumbling mats, and more. Fix the Clinic Home Resource is a wonderful place for people who want a cheap way of fixing things up. They also have a tool library where you guys can check out equipment. You will help teach you how to repair those items by sharing their knowledge and expertise. So if you're all about uh, trying to fix small engines, uh, crafting, uh, mostly uh, gardening, and a lot of uh, just outdoor type activities, Missoula Urban Demonstration Project along with Home Resource uh, is a great place to work on a fix-it clinic. Trampled by Turtles and Camp, Kettle House Amphitheater is having uh, the performance by Trampled by Turtles and Camp with an extra A in the middle to the Kettle House Amphitheater for live performances on July 17th. Uh, yeah, and that's happening at 5.30 on Saturday. Bonner Park is also doing some live music. It's a BYOB. Come check out the hits of Dancing in the Rain. It's a DJ music at the Bonner Park starting at 6 p.m. Saturday night. But also, Missoula Paddleheads are going to be playing tonight, Saturday, and Sunday. All sorts of things. They're going to be going against Billings. So Missoula Paddleheads will be versing Billings. And then we have, like I said, we'll be streaming a comedy show on Saturday, and it starts at 7.30 p.m. You can watch it on YouTube and the uh, Zach's Facebook, but also you can go to MCAT.org via Local Live to find out more. Revival Comedy is back in July with another packed up hour stand-up from some of the most talented voices in town. This month, we'll bring back headliner Christian Campbell, who took some time off to welcome her face baby to the world. And so this show is rated R. Kids are welcome to come, but you should really know uh, that 
there's some so saucy language in these comedy shows, so uh, just think ahead. Uh, there's also comedy at Roxy the same night competing, which they're going to have uh, Pete Jr. and Andy Gold. They're not streaming. Uh, but they'll be, uh, they were uh, selected for, pr to perform in the biggest comedy festivals in the country. They're joining forces for a night of hilarity at the Roxy Theater in Missoula, Montana. Uh, show showtime is at 8 p.m., and there's only 66 seats in the Roxy Theater for this show. And then, of course, finally, Saturday at Head Start Playground, the uh, North Side neighborhood brought to you uh, the North Missoula CDC. Uh, part of this, uh, the Missoula Outdoor Cinema, is back, and they're going to be showing Dirty Dancing at 9.15 or closer to, the, to sundown. And it is going to be at 1001 Warden Avenue. All right. So that pretty much does it for my morning show. I have a video I do want to show you guys. And let me just double check. Yes, here it is. This is a fun video. It's a tease. I'm not even sure if it's even done or not, but this is from our summer camps in which we'll be premiering these videos tonight for all the kids' families. So without further ado, here's a taste of our summer camp from Animation One. How I do say I love my con this country and my house in the woods and my little foxes, of course. So you got the greens for today? Yes, I do. Do you what? think we should go down to the farmer's market and sell them? That's a good idea. Come on, Gil and Gilbert. Might those be the foxes and the greens from up on the hill there? Very nice, very nice. My dear, do you happen to live there? Yes. Very nice, very nice. Well, I can get you some very nice things. Very nice indeed. Come along then. I don't trust this guy. He seems pretty suspicious. What do you mean? He's totally trustworthy. You're just being silly. Am I? Well, I'm going to get into my diamond encrusted car and drive into my gold encrusted manor. No, it's very nice, very nice. And you could have it all, my lady, for just the low, low price of your entire property. It's not that big of a deal, you know? It's a pretty, it's a very nice deal, in fact. J just your entire property, and you can have it all. We can't let him do that. That's our problem. We grew up in for years. It doesn't matter. We can build another farm on the mansion. And just think about it. We'll have all that land and that car. I don't trust you for being silly. I don't think so. I think he's up to something. Let's do it. Let's find out what he's doing. We need to get this not very nice at all farm out of the way so that we can bring in the most amazing thing in the world. And you're going to have to wait to see it some other time. <laughs> but yeah, there's just a little taste of what you guys will probably see sometime in the future here airing on MCAT, but we'll also make sure to post it on our Facebook and YouTubes for you guys to enjoy. Um, it's a mixture of some a lot of uh, stop animation films along with some... Um, uh, fun live action videos like I just showed you. I didn't want to show you guys too much, but just a little taste um, as we go forward uh, towards the rest of the day. If you guys are interested in learning more about our summer camps and other things, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your source for everything Missoula community. We have orientation here at MCAT every Saturday at 10 a.m. If you're interested, in, you can drop on in. You can fill out a form online for a user application, but we will also have print out, uh, printed out uh, applications for you guys to fill out here as well. And per part of the rules is that uh, once you become certified here at MCAT, you'll be able to check out many of our wonderful equipment, including uh, the studio space that I use today, and a couple of our podcast rooms. I'll, let you, I'll show you guys some more about that. But you guys have to drop in and show you guys more. If you're just going to call, I'll be like, what do you got at MCAT? I'll be like, you're going to have to find out, partner. But we're here at the library, and you, can, you guys can check us out. And if you want to learn more about my show, you can find me all by looking up 
Wake Up Missoula on the Googles. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It's going to be a hot one for the next couple of days for sure. And take care.